Hello everyone and welcome to your first week of Introduction to Biblical Languages. Uh, just a quick note, if you can hear kind of a constant, what sounds like a buzzing noise, uh, that's actually the cicadas. If you're not from the Midwest, then that may not make any sense to you, but they are bugs that make a mighty noise. So you might hear that kind of coming in through the microphone, just a little caveat. Uh, so. If you've looked at all at the lecture for this week, I hope you realize that this is really a dip your toes in the water kind of week. I really kind of want you to get your bearings into what the the formula of this course is going to be, as I mentioned in the introduction video, the cadence of the course. And so this isn't really meant to bombard you. It's just meant to give you kind of a refresher course and kind of get you in the frame of mind you're going to need to be successful in this class. So... I'm just going to run through what I think are some of the important points of the lecture just to give you an idea. My recommendation is that you watch this video as you look over the lecture for the first time and that'll give you focus so that when you're looking at it later um, more in depth you'll know exactly what you're looking for and where to find it. So the first part of the lecture is just your parts of speech. Um, now this isn't an exhaustive list, it's the important pieces that are going to have interpretive significance when you start looking at Greek grammar. So uh, just to run over them quickly, nouns, um, you remember the, the definition person, place, or thing. That generally works. Um, you have some examples there. Pronouns um, are things like he, she, it, he, her, I, me, they, them, you. Um, anything that generalizes a noun um, so that you don't have to keep repeating the name of the person or, or the object. Okay, uh, the next one there, adjectives, we'll go over some of these more in depth, um, but these are describing words that are usually um, attached to nouns, usually, um, they can function in other ways, which we'll see soon. Verbs, uh, we'll go into these also in a little bit more detail farther down in the lecture, um, but they can function in a variety of ways, um, as in Jim runs, or we see. Prepositions. Uh, there are quite a few of these in the English language, not quite so many in Greek, so that's helpful. However, they can have a wide variety of meanings. So uh, these are words that connect things either spatially or conceptually. So um, the dog is under the table. Under is a preposition that gives you some sort of spatial orientation. Um, I am under the authority of the U.S. government. Um, I'm actually not. Uh, but that's that's more of a conceptual idea, right? Uh, it doesn't give you any sense of where I am, but conceptually where I am, right? So uh, prepositions can function in both of those ways. Uh, adverbs, these are the trickiest ones that people struggle with the most. Uh, the best de description I can give to you is this is the manner in which you accomplish a verb. So Jim ran. How did he run? He ran silently. That's the manner in which he executed the action of the verb. The dog ate dinner. How? quickly. So so you see that uh, adverbs generally answer the question of how did someone do the verb, okay? Uh, conjunctions, things like and, or, but, uh, and so on, and these can function in different ways, coordinating and so on. We'll get to those more in depth later on uh, in about four or five weeks. Um, and then interjections like, oh, and hey, uh, things like that. Um, those are just fun little things to throw in. Okay, uh, let's jump into then the functions of nouns. This is where we're going to be doing most of our work uh, in the coming weeks. Um, so just to make it very basic, you have the subject. Um, this is the thing that is doing the action of the verb. So the apostle sends the prophet. Who sends? The apostle does. This is the subject um, in relation to the main verbal action. The main verb in this case is sends, and the apostle is the one doing it. The direct object receives the action of the main verb. So who is being sent? It's the prophet. Um, so the apostle sends the prophet. The prophet is the direct object. The indirect object, uh, this is the thing that is indirectly affected by a main verb. So, for instance, the apostle sends the prophet to the king. The king is not the direct object of the verb. That is, the apostle is not sending the king. He's sending the prophet to the king. Um, and then finally, 
showing possession. Now, I give you these four categories because they become important in Greek grammar, but they all have different names and we'll correlate them later on in the course. I just want you to kind of figure out how they work in English first. So possession, this is something that most of you are probably familiar with. Um, we often do it with an apostrophe S, um, but the long way of doing it is using the preposition of. So for instance, this is the computer of Derek. This is Derek's computer. Um, so computer is the main noun and Derek is uh, the, one, the one to whom it belongs. Okay, so that's how we generally show possession. Derek's computer, Derek's dog, Derek's house, and so on. Um, those will become much more important in the coming weeks. All right, adjectives. So there are three main ways that adjectives function. The first being attributive. This is the one we use most often. Um, Jesus is the mighty king. It doesn't just tell you what king he is, but it tells you what kind of king, the quality that's associated with that kingship. Um, this is called an attributive because it's an attrib it's attributing a quality to a noun that appears uh, with it. So there's a noun that has a quality attributed. A predicate adjective always occurs after a form of the verb to be, so is, was, will be, etc. And it's just an adjective standing by itself that's modifying the subject of the sentence. So King Jesus is mighty. So you can see we're essentially saying the same thing, but we're using the adjective in a very different way. The river is blue. The sky is blue. The tree is green. Those are all examples of uh, a predicate adjective because you could also say, which tree are you looking at? The green tree. Uh, that's an, that's an attributive. Predicate is when it comes after a form of the verb to be. And then finally, you have the substantive. Now, I've had this interesting experience with my two-year-old son recently who refuses to use adjectives in any way but substantively, and it's quite hilarious, especially when I try to explain to him what he's doing. Uh, he'll be watching a show, and a horse will run across the screen, and he'll say, white one. And I'll say, no, you mean the white horse. And he'll say, horsey. The white one, he is using a substantive adjective. The reason it's substantive is because it's not directly being attributed to the noun. It's almost functioning as a noun in and of itself. But because we in English need nouns to be somehow attached to adjectives, uh, we put the word one to give it substantive or substance, I should say. And so we call it a substantive adjective. Uh, Jesus is the king the mighty one uh, is how you make that adjective mighty substantive okay finally verbs uh, this is just going to trouble you probably for most of the class but you should be aware that there are 12 different tenses of English verbs um, and I've tried to kind of set them uh, kind of apart or pattern them in in groups of three so if there's 12 of them that means there's four different groups the first group is simple there's simple present simple past simple future i jump i jumped i will jump these should be fairly simple for you simple the next one is continuous present continuous, past continuous, future continuous. In these, you add a form of the verb to be into the verb. So instead of just I jump, it is now I am jumping. So you add the ing form of uh, the verb after the to be verb. So I am jumping, you are jumping, he is jumping, she is jumping, we are jumping, and so on. And then you just modify the form of the verb to be for the past and the future. I was jumping, you were jumping, we were jumping, they were jumping, would all be past continuous. And then the future continuous, I will be jumping, you will be jumping, they will be jumping, and so on. The idea there is that these actions are not finished when the person is speaking. They are in the process of doing them. Therefore, they are continuing to do them. So I am jumping is a present continuous. The next set are perfect. Present perfect, past perfect, and future perfect. This is where you use a form of the verb to be 
and you also add uh, um, the past tense form of the verb. So in this case, I have jumped. So jumped is the past tense form of jump, um, and it's in conjunction with have. I have jumped. I had jumped. I will have jumped. Um, so the way these function generally is that they describe an action that happened in the past for a period of time. So I have done this. I, uh, you have done this. She has done this. We have done this, um, and so on. So... Uh, you'll notice that in the past tense you have to use had instead of have because that is the appropriate form for the um, for the for the past sense of the word. Um, so I have jumped, I had jumped, I will have jumped. Um, kind of looking at yourself from the past, but in the future, right? Uh, it's a strange. Uh, thing to try to construct, but we actually do use it fairly often. So you might say, for instance, um, if you're kind of thinking about, okay, so I'm trying to plan for next weekend. So by Thursday, I will have gone to the store. That's a future perfect. Okay. Uh, then the final set are the trickiest, the present perfect continuous, the past perfect continuous, and the future perfect continuous. Okay. So um, I also want to point out here, you kind of se separate these into subsets, right? You have the simple and then the continuous, and then you have the perfect and the perfect continuous. Okay. So you can kind of set them off that way too, if it helps you remember uh, all the different forms here, you're just going to add the word Ben, um, and keep the same form uh, of have that you did in the previous and add the ing instead of the past tense. So I have been jumping. Uh, I had been jumping and I will have been jumping. So if you kind of think about the way I just described the perfect tense, now you're just inserting a continuing idea into that. Uh, tense. So those are all the different ways that we actually do use verbs, whether you realize it or not. See if you can spot some of them in your uh, in your dialogue with others this week, um, and feel free to interrupt them and go, "Hey, you just used a future perfect continuous. Did you know that?" Uh, see if you can spot those. So uh, the homework that you're going to be doing is going to have you looking at different biblical texts and parsing out the nouns, adjectives, and verbs, and then asking you some questions to see if you can differentiate the different kinds of verbs and nouns and adjectives that are there. Uh, so uh, make sure that you post that in the uh, little place where it says the assignments do. It's like a little hand like this. Uh, that's where you turn it in. Um, and then also post it in the discussion forum because I want others to look at your work um, and ask questions and I want you to ask questions of others that's part of your task in this class so make sure that you do that and feel free to shoot me any emails if you have any questions I look forward to talking to you in the forums this week